Let's talk Rive, specifically Rive Academy Course 1. Recently, School of Motion put out a course dedicated to Rive, which if you don't know, is essentially combining motion graphics and web development, putting it together into one cohesive package that allows motion designers to become more involved with the whole UI UX experience and so forth. Overall, the software is actually pretty cool and I found the software to be pretty robust, but I wanna go ahead and share my thoughts on School of Motion's course, Rive Academy Volume 1, and if I think it's worth it. So as you can see here, I have several pages of just general, you know, what I felt going through the whole course, you know, what I found valuable, what I found that maybe could be a little bit more valuable, things like that. So let's go ahead and dive in and see if it's worth it. So first we're gonna start out talking about what was the learning experience through the course uh, and what were some pros and cons. Starting with the pros, by the end of the course, I found the general knowledge about state machines, which is frankly Rive's biggest hurdle with getting new users into the program from my viewpoint. Uh, to be pretty well explained. I understood state models after leaving the Rive course. I didn't understand it at all going in, so overall I consider that a pretty big success with the course. I went in not knowing anything about state machines and I came out knowing a bunch about state machines. So overall, pretty good. One of the things I really like about school motion courses is how hands-on they are. You're typically given tutorial walkthroughs where the person who is giving you the course is explaining you know, how things work and so forth, but you're also building in conjunction with them on the video. Uh, in your own project. I really like that a lot as a hands-on learner, and I found that the Rive course was pretty much just the same, so again, very good. I've gone through several School of Motion courses over the years, and I usually find them very valuable. One of the things I found in this course that was a little bit of a curveball for me or something new was there are moments where, instead of explaining the whole way to do something, instead, if it was a repetitive task, it was kind of just said, hey, go do it yourself. You already know how to do it. I'll see you in the next lesson. And I really didn't mind that actually, because I think with Rise specifically, it's great because you want to do repetitive stuff in there to get better and better understanding how things work, the logic flow. So I didn't really mind that at all. And I recommend anybody who goes to the course to go ahead and just when those moments come up, just say, okay, cool. Give yourself a little extra time and just go do the activities by yourself to catch up for the next video. I think one of the biggest pros of the course overall is when you are buying the course, you're not necessarily buying how Rive totally functions from a technical standpoint. You do learn a good bit about Rive and how it operates, but what you're really buying is the understanding of Rive's logic. That's where a lot of the value was for me. Again, I really didn't understand Rive state machines or things like that. I just kind of didn't get it. I came out on the other end, understanding a lot of it. That is where a lot of the value is for the course. So just keep that in mind when you're going in. There are some features within Rive that the course doesn't talk about. And I'm not really sure if it's just the case where the software has just been updated so much that maybe those features didn't exist or things like that. But it's worth keeping in mind that really the value of the course is just understanding the logic of how Rive works. That being said as well, if you have zero animation experience or anything like that, don't let this be a turnoff to you. If you you know, typically work as a coder, maybe you have no idea of After Effects or how that works or anything like that, but you're interested in still learning the software, Joey does a good job of kind of walking you through some fundamental principles when it comes to animation and so forth. So, don't let that dissuade you if you're not an animator or motion designer. I would consider the course to be pretty accessible when it comes to that. Now let's talk about some of the areas that could probably be a bit improved. One of the things I found during the course that I wasn't super fan of was when you go through the course, it's gone through in a way to where many of the features are still accessible for you. But if you do not own the paid version of Rive, you're gonna find there's certain things like tags, certain ways to share Rive files, et cetera, that are now paywalled. So it's just worth keeping in mind that if you go in with the free version of Rive, it's, it's very niche, but there's some things that are talked about and shown that you're not gonna be able to participate in. I wanna make this super clear. That's not School of Motion's fault. Rive is a software that is continuously being updated. It's just kind of unfortunate that some of those features that are very cool in, in Rive are now locked behind a paywall. Another area of improvement I think would be worth discussing is the implementation side. We are shown how to implement Rive files into websites and how we can set up some basic events and so forth. And overall, it's pretty good. But I felt like at that point, I really couldn't participate anymore. And so it was a bit of a change up where I no longer could get the hands-on learning aspect. 
I was watching someone do something, but I couldn't really do it myself. And as a result, I kind of felt like I didn't get as much value out of that one point. What I kind of found interesting about it though was I never really saw those portions of the course as a, hey, I'm gonna go learn how to do it myself. You know, I can't wait to implement to my website or whatever. Instead, I was really hoping to be equipped with proper knowledge to go to my employer and say, I think Rive is worth investing in for X, Y, and Z. This is really cool. And I felt like at first I was pretty prepared for that after watching the video, but when I went to go explain it, I found that I, again, just was having a hard time of explaining the benefits of Rive. It has a lot of features, but I think it could be difficult for people to understand there's more to it than hovering a mouse over a character and they wave their hand at you. Another aspect of the course I think could be improved is we are given Rive files to essentially skip those steps where you are kind of just asked to go do something on your own, but I couldn't use the files because I was I guess using a free version of Rive, so I couldn't load Rive files, which is kind of weird. I, I tried different methods and nothing, so maybe that's just my software or something, but I kind of was a little bit like, okay, cool. So I have these Rive files that are for the next lesson, but I literally can't load Rive files. Again, this really isn't School of Motion's fault. This is more just Rive's pretty fast development cycle and paywalling features that at that time were accessible for others. I also just found it strange where when I used Rive for like the first time, like a year ago or something like that, I could embed things into my website and it was great. And now it looks like that's also paywalled. So I, I don't know. Another thing is that while again, I understand certain features may not have been in Rive during the time of the course creation, I would have liked to have seen bones and how those work in Rive. That's something that I was really interested in learning more about and it's not covered in the course. And if you're not sure what bones are, it's how Rive rigs things. So if you want a character like walking or something like that, you would probably be using bone tools. Something that is speculative, but I think is worth talking about is with how much Rive has been developed just from when that course came out, it kind of makes me wonder when volume two comes out, how much of volume one is really gonna still be relevant uh, or paywall or whatever. We already had things in Rive Volume 1 that was getting paywalled all of a sudden. So hopefully, you know, when Volume 2 comes out, Volume 1 is still pretty good. But enough about the learning part. Let's kind of dive into what is marketed towards you and then what you get. So I came in at an introductory price of like a $50 discount. So I paid $250 for the course, but normally it's $300 or your regional equivalent. And just to make sure we're on the same page here, uh, what the website claims you get is six hours of learning downloadable project files, PDF guides, and a final challenge to test your skills. Breaking it down, the total learning portions of the videos was around 5.7 hours. Total learning, not counting usage demonstrations behind paywalls, is about 5.3 hours. Total learning, not counting animation fundamentals, which is when Joey talks about, you know, how does animation work, principles, things like that. That is 5.2 hours. And then the total learning, not counting animation fundamentals and usage demonstrations that are now locked behind paywalls, it's around 4.8 hours of learning. In other words, if you're going in with fundamental understandings of animation and you're using the free version of Rive, you're really gonna get about 4.8 hours of usable videos that you can follow along with with your own project. That's not horrible to be honest, but it's worth knowing that it is six hours of videos, but you're gonna end up losing like an hour of that if you are pretty experienced already going into Rive with pretty much an understanding of how motion design works, uh, things like that. A big aspect is because I was using the free version of Rive, again, I, I maybe it's just my computer or something, but I couldn't use the project files that were Rive project files. There are Figma files included that you can use as long as you know you keep in mind that if you're using a free version of Figma, there's a limited amount of files you can have. Then, you know, cool, the Figma files work, that's great. The Rive files unfortunately didn't, but the Figma files are really what you need. The PDF guides are generally pretty useful, but there's one guy that pretty much rules them all, and that is the mental model PDF that's in the course that properly demonstrates the logic flow of how Rive thinks and processes and the workflow of it. That's, I mean, that's pretty much the gold PDF in the course. That's the one you're paying to get. The rest are nice, but 
that mental model, that is where the value is. The last thing to talk about is the final challenge. I feel a little mixed on this, to be honest. The final challenge in the course is essentially a remix of the overall course. And what I mean by that is you learn the technical knowledge of how Rive works and you learn the critical thinking about how Rive thinks or operates. And the final challenge was pretty much a remix of the whole course where you're gonna be using a lot of the same technical knowledge you just learned, which is good. You wanna repeat the information and so forth, but the critical thinking side of it, you're not really diving into like a whole new concept. Like you're not taking those skills and you're applying it to a completely different type of project. You're taking the skills and you're just applying it to the same project, just reskinned. So it's worth noting that, that, hey, you might find it super useful. I do think going over and reusing the information again and again on the same project can be good. But if you're expecting like this whole new challenge, this new world or whatever, using what you just learned, you might not find that. So the big question is, is it worth it? For $300, I think it's a bit of a toss up. It's new software, so you're paying essentially a premium to get involved in hopefully a new service that can be provided, a new tool that can be used, things like that. You're paying from my point of view, a fairly high price to be an early adopter. That being said, if you're interested in learning Rive, but you're not super sure if you're gonna take the software or tool, whatever, and go out and start trying to implement it into pretty much everything you can, then, I think it could be a bit of a tough sell. The difficult thing is I don't recommend just going to get Rive and playing around with it. Uh, what the course essentially taught me was there are certain ways to think with Rive. And if I'm gonna use the tool properly, then I'm glad I went through the course because otherwise I probably wouldn't know how to use Rive as well as I do now. Beyond that, I found two key areas that were really where the value lied. Number one, Joey and the School of Motion team walk you through how Rive thinks, state machines, and so forth, which is a pretty big hurdle when you're getting into Rive. So in that aspect, it's very valuable. And that way you're paying $300 or a decent lump sum for someone to essentially walk you through Rive without fluff and in a very direct approach that allows you to be hands-on. The second thing is walkthroughs around the features of Rive beyond the state machine. Essentially, again, you know, how Rive works, how Rive operates, but not really the state machines or logic or thinking processes as much as it is, what does this tool do? How do you use it correctly? Things like that. To be honest, I don't think either of these should be as valuable as they are in the course, because I think that Rive should be able to teach you this anyway. This is the fundamentals of what Rive is. This is how Rive thinks. This is what Rive does. I think that that information should already be available through Rive, whether it be the development team or things like that. And while they do have tutorials out there, the fact that I went through the song course and better understood what Rive does and what Rive's normal documentation already kind of has, leaves me in a position to where I have mixed feelings about it. Does that mean Rive for me just wasn't as accessible and I had to pay $300 to go through a course to better understand it? Maybe. Should I have even existed at that point? I don't know. So again, is the course worth it? I think if you're really gung ho about wanting to take Rive and be an early adopter and get out there and you're, you know, you want to use it, get projects with it and so forth and implement it into your current projects and services. I think that if you're getting it from a personal standpoint, as long as you're going to go gung ho on it, I think it could be worth it. I think if you are a company, and you build apps or you build websites or whatever, then I think this is a pretty good purchase for the most part, value wise. Uh, and if you are an individual that your company is willing to cover that kind of stuff for, then, you know, obviously I say go for it, try it out and see if that's something that could be useful for you and your agency, your company, your business, whatever. Um, if you're pretty much just someone who doesn't know if they like Rive or not, and you don't know what you're gonna do with it at the end of the day, then if you have $300 to blow for a course and you just want to do it, go for it. But otherwise you might not find as much value as the other categories of people who would buy this course. Again, just to reiterate, if you're going to get Rive and you are dedicated to going out there and getting a new project or whatever, and you want to use Rive a ton, more power to you. I think the course would be worth it at that point. Uh, if you are an agency or a business and you're already kind of involved in app development or you know website design, whatever, I think it's worth checking it out. If you're an individual who 
you just don't know if you like Rive or not, then there are probably other places to go first. So I think, you know, if you're like me and you have a hard time understanding state machines through Rive's typical training documents and stuff like that, then I found a lot of value in it. But I feel like this was essentially just going to the same destination with a different approach. And now I got to the destination.